Hey everybody, it's Vicki with Dementia with Grace. How are y'all today? I hope everybody's doing great. I am a little bit under the weather. Some of you know that I had a heart attack a couple of months ago. I'm still in cardiac rehab. I had to have an adjustment done in February and I am just quite not back to myself. So pardon the hat um, and please know that I am going to be recording the next um, three videos today in this hat. So I love y'all, um, just ignore the hat. <laughs> um, we are talking about in this series, what remains um, in the stages, in the seven stages. And I wanted to remind everybody that um, you, can, you can understand the seven stages um, as it relates in the three stages this way. Stage one, two, and three is early. Stage four and five is middle. And stage six and seven is late. So if you are uh, accustomed to talking about the stages as early, middle, late, that's the way the seven stages correspond to the three stages. So today we are talking about stage four and I will link the video up here um, where I talk in detail about what is lost in stage four but of course in this series we're talking about what remains and so we're going to talk about what remains in stage four. Stage four is the hardest stage for the person with dementia because they know what they are losing. They absolutely can acutely um, understand what their losses are and they can no longer sufficiently cover up their losses. In, in one, there's hardly any losses. In two, there's very minimal losses and they can cover it up. In three, they can still cover it up, even in testing. Um, they can use mnemonic devices. They can use um, you know, just, just different little tricks and, and tips to kind of um, cover up their losses in three. But in four, it's too much. There's too much going on. There's too much lost and they can't cover up for those losses. So it's the hardest stage for them. They are as bad as they're going to be while they still understand how bad they are. Um, so that is what four is. That said, there's a lot that remains in four. They still have uh, a very much intact sense of humor in four. Um, they can get jokes. They can get the nuances of jokes. Um, they can understand sarcasm, so they can get that part of jokes. Um, they can understand, um, you know, little um, playing little tricks and jokes on people. So, you know, they can, you know, they can do that kind of thing and keep some, some, you know, jovial. Um, banter going with people in four. Um, they can enjoy music and art. Um, they can enjoy deep conversations. They're not as connected to the recent past, to maybe what happened in the last day or two, and they're not going to be able to plan for a, more than a few days in the future. Um, you know, if you tell them you have a doctor's appointment next month, Da, 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 they would not be able to remember that. If you say we have a doctor's appointment tomorrow, they might be able to grasp and continue to hold on to that information. But what they're going to really, really be in contact with and really connect with are their, 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 their um, long past. Things that happened when they were um, children, uh, adolescent, high school, college years, um, maybe young married, um, young career folks, you know, they're able to connect with those things. And so, you know, there may be some, some hobbies or some things that, that they let go because you know, for whatever reason, because life just happens. And maybe they used to love to paint, but they let that go when the kids came along and their career got more challenging and, you know, all of that. They may used to have loved to bowl uh, in high school. And then, you know, after they got married and, you know, the bowling stopped, you know, they may love to bowl again. Things like that need to be mined by you, um, by the caregiver, um, and, and deep, dig, dig into their deep memories and figure out what maybe they would have uh, loved to continue to do had they had the time. Well, now they have the time. So maybe they could, they could reignite a passion um, for, you know, whatever, um, stamp collecting. I mean, you know, just whatever they used to enjoy doing. 
Um, use the gather tool that is found on my website, DementiaWithGrace.com. It's a free uh, PDF form. Put in your email, it sends it to you, and it's a 12 page, I think it's printed 12, 10 or 12 pages of questions. Um, I've talked about it before in videos, but it's, it's very interesting. Um, to fill that out and in four they should be able to fill it out themselves if they don't want to they don't show an interest you can ask them some of the questions and fill it out later um, and you know just do that over the course of you know some weeks or months even and get that all filled out and so that you know you can use it later on for reminiscing but you could use it now to try to establish you know what they can still do and what they would enjoy still doing there's a lot of joy um, that can be found in four, but you are really going to have to pull it out probably because four engenders a lot of frustration, a lot of anger, a lot of disappointment because they know what they're missing. So, you know, you have to help them reframe and enjoy what remains and, and encourage them and say, you know, I believe in shaking hands with the truth. And I think, you know, it, you know, you can say, listen, it sucks. It absolutely does that you are losing so much. And this disease, this dementia is taking so much from you. But let's focus on what remains. And let's, let's pay attention because we all know that, you know, it is going to get worse. Now, let's just say the truth about things. And so right now it's not as bad as it's gonna get. So let's enjoy what we have together and see if they can possibly reframe it in a better, um, in a better, um, in a more positive light, a better light, um, and, and see if, if they can do that. Next, we'll talk about five, and then we'll talk about six, seven together, okay? All right, I hope this is helping. Leave me some uh, comments down below. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. I don't know what the next series will be, but we'll be talking about something that I hope is engaging and informative and um, uh, something that you can use on, on your dementia caregiving journey, okay? All right, I'll talk to y'all soon. Love y'all, bye. Mwah.